Hey guys, Mix here, and in today's video, we are back with the Half Scout NASCAR, and in today's video, we're going to be making something pretty cool. I've been looking forward to doing this for such a long time, and uh, now is finally the proper time to do it. So, based off the title, you could probably already tell what we're doing. We're going to be making a sweet custom dash for this thing. I got pretty much all the supplies I need uh, in order to make this work. I've never done anything like this, and it does involve a good bit of wiring, which I'm like not great at, so this is definitely going to be a uh, first time experience for me. But if I was able to do all this, then I think I should be able to make a custom little dashboard. And real quick, if you guys are new to this build series, this engine is out of a 1980 Honda CB750. That's right, 750 cc's slapped in the back of this go-kart. And in the last video, we really didn't do much with it. Uh, we basically just put the body on for the first time. Um, I just saw how everything fit and kind of got that all under control. But in the video before that, when I made this little tensioner for it, um, a ton of you guys were saying that it needs to go on the bottom, not the top. Um, so we might go ahead and go f and fix that as well. I am pretty crunched for time right now. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this done all today, but if not, then we just go into tomorrow. Or if I finish the dash, but I don't have enough time to do that, I could just do that off camera. But just want to let you guys know that I saw all your comments, and I'm going to go ahead and flip that around. But first off, um, these are the supplies I got. So there's a part that we're going to unbag uh, right now. Uh, I've got 25 feet of wire, and this is basically like the main dashboard, I guess you could say. And I didn't want it to go across really the whole entire... The lights just went out. There it goes. But I really didn't want it to go all the way across this whole thing. Just because I do want some room in here and I am going to be making more room in here because it's already super, super tight as is. So I definitely would still like to have some leg room. And if there's ever an emergency, I want to be able to get out of this thing as quickly as possible. We'll see how it does with fitting then. Uh, but right now I want to get started and unbag this and see how it is. You guys will see what it is in just a sec. It's definitely pretty cool. All right. That is sick. <coughs> Jesus, it smells like soap, like really strong soap. I don't know why. <laughs> oh my, that's insane. <coughs> well, at least we know, hopefully it's clean. But what I got is a little switch panel for this thing. I could wire up all the fuel pumps and everything like that, you know, make sure that they're all good to go. Um, and I could have a start button on here. I can just hold it down and uh, hopefully I could get this to work. I really don't know what this is on the back of here, but we'll figure it out. But I definitely think that that'll be really, really cool to have uh, on the cart. I mean, it's like pretty sick. And it's like a carbon fiber type look. It's obviously not real carbon fiber, but uh, definitely pretty cool. And then we can probably make this the uh, ignition or something like that. And I didn't go crazy getting a ton of them because there really isn't a ton of stuff to do. There's probably going to be fuel pump. And honestly, <laughs> that's all I can really think of unless I put like headlights or whatever in this thing. I have room for improvements. And it did come with a bunch of wires, which is pretty nice. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to use these. They're not very long, but uh, they might be able to come in handy because it already has the little plugs pre-connected in this. So that could definitely be a uh, good help. I won't have to use all mine. So first off, before we begin anything, I want to go ahead and see exactly how I'm going to have this dash mount up. So basically it's just going to go something just like this and I'll be able to just reach right here, flip everything up and turn it on. Uh, but the steering shaft is in the way right now so I uh, might have to cut that, cut a little slot for that or either cut this to the length from the top of the steering shaft to the top of this uh, part of the roll cage right here. Because I don't want it to be too long and too low down uh, if I go ahead and cut a little slot in this to push it down to push it down and even it with this because I might not be able to get my legs under there and you know I want to have enough room like I said earlier so I'm gonna go ahead and bring over the switch panel see how wide it is compared to this because I might just have to like cut this in half and that could honestly be perfect oh yeah so if I mount it just above the steering shaft I would definitely have enough uh, like room with wires in order to uh, mount this up and have enough room to drill it up and you know bolt it down and everything like that so I'm gonna go ahead put this exactly where I want it put a line across cut it as evenly as I possibly can and then this is still you know along with the roll cage um, so I might just weld it 
onto the cage super super lightly because this is so thin I don't want to like burn right through it cut out a little area for the switch panel bolt that in and then we get started with wiring and everything like that the dashboard part and I did plan on integrating the original the speedometer and the tachometer and like the neutral light and everything like that into the dashboard but now that I'm thinking about it I don't really think that there's any possible way I'm gonna be able to integrate this speedometer into the go-kart because if we go over to the bike the speedometer cable which is this right here is ran all the way to the front wheel and well, this wheel isn't on the go-kart, so I can't really think of a way that I can even really make this work. But how I believe this works is this little like housing right here like reads how fast everything's spinning around it and then it sends like the signal to the speedometer and like this spins I believe or does something and it makes a reading. And the only possible way I can think is taking out this little part and somehow trying to get it to go around the go-kart but that is super super skinny it's like the size of my finger and the axle on the go karts like that thick so yeah there's like no way so i really don't think it'd be like worth the hassle or anything i'm sure i could get like a uh, a gps type speedometer and put that in there that might be cooler one that like lights up or something like that so what i'm gonna do is take the speedometer off of the bracket back here i'm still gonna be able to use the tachometer uh, which is sweet. It has a cord which is somewhere over here. So this cord right here is what reads your tachometer signal. This is the one that came off the bike obviously so one side screws into uh, that little piece right there and then the other side goes over here to the valve cover right down there and then I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it but yep there it is. Inside of there there's like a little tiny lever and when this engine is running, that thing spins that little like flat bar looking piece and that sends the signal to your tachometer that, you know, this engine's running. Obviously, this is incredibly short. Um, there's no way it's gonna be able to reach from this all the way to the dash. So I would think that they would sell like longer versions of these. So what I'm just gonna do actually right now before I go ahead and cut this up to try and make something work for this. I'm just gonna look online and see if they sell extended versions of those, and then if they do, we could go ahead and integrate it into the dash. So I just got back from checking online, and unfortunately, I did not really find anything that can really extend to what I needed to. I did find like a six inch extension that I could put on this, but still another six inches won't even be close to enough uh, in order to really safely run around and like get it to the dash. <laughs> I could probably do the six inches, but it would go in like straight across and super, super tight. Obviously, I don't want to do that. What I do have is this. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, and I actually do have pretty much the same exact one that was on the NASCAR when I got it, but that one does not work. But this one is brand new out of the box. A uh, friend of mine gave it to me, and I think I might be able to get this to work in order to read a tack signal. So, before I drill a hole into this, I do want to try and get this to work. So, the black and red wires go both to your battery, you know, black negative, red positive. The white goes to a headlight switch if you want to have lights in it, which, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. But the green one goes to your negative uh, spot on your ignition coil. So, I have two ignition coils, and on here, it'll say positive right there, and then negative. And the negatives on the coils are both connected, so I'm hoping if I can just tap into this with that green wire, I might be able to get a tack signal from it and, uh, you know, bypass the whole tachometer system that it has on the valve cover. So I think I'm going to try that out real quick, and, uh, that would be really sweet if it does work. So right now I have the uh, wires hooked up. And before I said that the black goes to the uh, negative on the battery, it actually goes to a negative on uh, like the frame or the engine or anything like that. So I have the battery hooked up to the tack and a ground put. 
Um, so right now, what I'm going to do is I just unhooked one of the negatives over here and I'm just going to stick this in there where the negative goes. And right now I just want to crank it up and see if I could even get like any movement just to see if I could get the RPM signal to work and you know just see if I could get a cranking RPM. I might just spray some starter fluid in there just to maybe see if you know if cranking it won't be enough. Oh, I saw it move a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell though, so I am just going to put a smidge of starter fluid in there to see if I can get it to fire up. I really can't tell. Right when I hit the starter, I see it move, but when it fires, it's not doing anything. So I don't know if it needs to be hooked up to both of the negatives on the coil or something. I would think that it would at least show a reading on one of them. I'm going to try and mess around with the connections a little bit and see if I can get it to work. I was just tried hooking up like an actual connector to it and you know plugging it in and still I'm only getting the reading when I just start cranking it but once it's running like and well not really running but firing there's nothing at all so just kind of weird so unfortunately I can't get it to work I mean this isn't meant for this type of engine it's meant for like a Briggs and Stratton actually so uh, it makes sense why it's not working but it was definitely worth a shot I was able to get some like life out of it but I tried all different types of grounds and everything like that, but still can't get it to go while it's running, so it was worth a shot. I really, really want to have a tachometer, and I know that this one works because I just screwed it in, and if I turn this, I'm making some RPM. So I think I'm just going to check one more time if they have any extended ones, and if not, then uh, I'm just going to have to get some other type of setup. Eventually. And the longest I can find is 40 inches, which is pretty long, but way still not just not long enough at all I mean I just measured it just now and it would probably work but it's literally gonna be so insanely tight and it's gonna go right across here directly to the dash and we don't want that at all but I just contacted a company and I'm gonna see if they can either custom make me one or if they have any longer extensions than eight inches the one that is OEM on the bike is only two feet 24 inches which it's just like so small, <laughs> but I'm not gonna waste more time over this I'm just gonna go ahead and skip it and go ahead and begin mounting this up uh, Inside of the dash so then we could go ahead and begin uh, Wiring up everything and once I get a response back I can see what we could do uh, for the speedo and worst comes to worst since this is most likely already gonna be mounted into the go-kart I should be able to just drill a hole or whatever I need into the dash when it's already in there and uh, still be able to get attack in there. But for this, I want to have it on this side. I, at first, I was going to do this side, but this side just seems like more right. You know, when a car, you use your right hand to turn it on, and I'm just going to be using my right hand to start it. So, I don't know, it just seems like the right thing to do. And then once I figure out the tack, it'll be on the left side. So right now, I'm just going to measure out uh, where exactly I want it, make sure it's nice and centered, and then I'll cut a little rectangle for it, put it in, and then uh, I'll see how I can bolt it up. It's pretty tiny holes. It did come with screws, so I'll see if I just screw that in there and hopefully it should stay pretty tight. But let's get started with that right now. So I marked where I want to uh, drill the four holes to mount this thing up. Right now it's not where it is and you know it's going to be like covering all my over cuts and everything like that. But uh, I need a really 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 skinny drill bit and I thought I had one but I don't. And tonight I have a really really big drill with the fire department so I'm not going to be able to get to the store today. So what I'm going to do is end it off here for tonight and then tomorrow we can finish this thing completely up. And I'm going to do some more research. Uh, tonight when I come home on how I should do the tachometer and everything like that and then tomorrow we should have all of that figured out we can jump straight into working crank this thing out and uh, see how it looks works make this thing into a race car with its new push button start but anyway I'll catch you all tomorrow
All right, so I just finished up uh, welding up the dash onto the cart. And also, uh, these marks are from the respirator. Oh my god, that, that's really bad. But uh, that's from the respirator. But the welds came out decent, and once again, I'm not at all a professional welder. I really don't have a lot of experience welding, if you guys don't know already. I mean, that's really thick down there, and then it got, like, skinny. I don't know, but as long as it's strong and looks decent, then I'm fine with it. Obviously, it does have, like, a lot of, like, that slag type, type stuff around it. Just from it being a uh, flux core welder, they're really, really dirty, but honestly, the rainbow looking stuff from the heat kind of looks really cool, so I kind of might keep that and just get rid of like all that slag and stuff. And I didn't weld in the middle just yet, just in case I need to take this off. I want to have somewhere I, where I could like put it in there and kind of pull it off without bending it from the sides or anything like that, so I'm just going to keep that like that for now. But once this cools down, uh, we could go ahead and begin the fun part of wiring everything up. So before I begin working, I actually want to show you guys something that I'm going to be doing for the push start button. As you guys remember, before it had like the whole big like electronic thing on the back of this, I really don't know how this could even work with what I have. So what I did is I already went ahead and took apart the original start switch and kill switch. So as you guys can see, here's the start button and uh, the kill switch right here. And what I'm going to do is stick this wine cork into where uh, everything used to be. So I basically gutted out the whole push start. And now if I just push it down, that comes in and out. And what I did before it was I just cut down this middle part to a pretty firm fit into this. I'm probably going to use some like JB Weld or Gasket Maker or something just to make sure it sticks in there good enough that it already does. And then what I did to keep the original button in place is I just took this little tiny rod, uh, drilled a tiny hole into it, and then I'm going to just screw in uh, the original start button. And then basically when I press this down, the cork will hit into the button, basically act as a finger, and should turn over the engine. Some say it's kind of redneck. I think it's pretty innovative. But I figured I'd just let you guys know that before I go ahead and... Uh, start wiring this thing up. Alrighty guys, so I just finished up wiring up the fuel pump. I uh, I tried to run the lines out of the way. I kind of ran them under the cart along the side. I still got to like fasten down against the body. As you can see, it's like poking out over there. But then I ran them across to the battery. And uh, right now, I want to see if this works at all. So hopefully it does. <laughs> Woo, it's working. I think it just shot fuel over the ground, but it's working. Yeah, so... Uh, I thought it wouldn't really go that fast, but uh, it did and went over the tire. I should probably clean that all up. But I'm super, super pumped that everything's working how it should. So right now, what I'm just going to do real quick off camera is fasten all the wires up so they don't get caught or anything or anything like that. And once again, the fuel pump and fuel pressure regulator and gas tank really aren't in their permanent spots yet because I really wouldn't like to have it in the engine bay next to the hot engine. Because if there's a spill, this thing's going up in flames. So I was thinking maybe do it like in the front, but I don't really know yet. Definitely comment down below on where you guys think I should put it. So as I just went to go begin wiring up uh, the cable for the push start, I was looking around for my wires that I bought. I bought 25 feet of wire and I used all of it. I, I pulled everything tensions, you know, so there wouldn't be a ton of slack. I mean, I did put enough slack that, you know, if I do move some stuff around, which I am going to be doing, I won't have to rewire it. I have enough slack for it, but I used everything, which is insane. And right now it is too late out to go get uh, the wire because the place that I could get wire at is closed. So we're just going to pick this up again tomorrow and uh, we'll get that push start going. So see you all then. The next day.
that is over. So I just finished up wiring each little wire of that dang plug to across the whole side. It reaches now. I'm just so glad that's over. Um, so now when I turn the key, I should be able to press the start button and it should work. I'm just going to do all of this stuff off camera. It's not very fun watching me just tuck away these wires. But there's enough slack in there for me to run it underneath here, like maybe along here, and get all of it out of the way. All right, so now comes the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm, I'm finally going to press the big red button, and uh, hopefully it works. That's sick! <laughs> so this is the view from the uh, driver's seat. It definitely changes the look. I mean, obviously, the dash isn't fully filled out yet. We just have this little thing, but it just, it's so cool. <laughs> and now I can just, like, reach over and, you know, do whatever I have to. It's pretty sick. And, like, I finally started up without being on the outside of the car. I can start up in the driver's seat, which would definitely save a lot of time. <laughs> but once again, this is not the final product. This is just getting started with it and making a little custom dashboard for this thing. So guys, I'm going to be ending it off here. I know I did a lot of talking in this video, and I know it's a pretty long video, but uh, it was definitely a little bit of a different topic for me with all of electrical, but I'm really, really glad everything's working right now. And once again, I am going to go ahead and organize all of that off camera. Just, I want to get this video for you guys today. But comment down below if you guys think I can still get that tachometer over there to work. And also, that company that I messaged... Uh, that had the extensions for the OEM tachometer said that it might work. So I'm just going to go ahead and see what you guys say about the tachometer, you know, that looks like that one just because it's way nicer. Um, but if not, then I could get that other tach to work and we could fit it into this and have a working tachometer. So that would be pretty sweet. But anyway, guys, I'm going to be ending off the video here. Follow my social medias. They'll be in the outro of this video, Instagram, Snapchat. I use the most. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, tell your friends about the channel. Oh.